Today has been a day of enter and leave horse trails. I enter a horse trail. So just on the other side of that sign right there, I come off a trail. And I was on the horse trail for 20 yards. Now I leave the horse trail. And you wait and see. It'll be like 20 yards. And then back on the horse trail for 20 yards or something. It is like the craziest thing ever. Like, why in the hell are you rerouting us? Like, I'm looking over at the horse trail. The horse trail looks okay. Well, why couldn't I just stay on the friggin' horse trail? And what the hell? Right there's the horse trail. See, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, where are all the cool pictures and the cool scenery and the cliffs and the mountains? And believe it or not, you are looking down 99% of the time. You occasionally look up, try to find out where you're at. So am I still on the trail? It kind of looks like I am. I don't see any blazes, which is not unusual. This kind of looks like a trail. The leaves are crunchy. There's some good sticks on the ground. And basically that's what you do pretty much this whole hike. Oh, there's actually a blaze. Holy shit. I'm excited. I'm going in the right direction. I should take out my GPS and take a picture of it because they are few and far between. This one's even upside down.
I wasn't able to do a day four trail log video because the battery went dead in my camera. So now that the battery is charged up, it is now mid-afternoon, 2 p.m. on day five. I'm doing day four's trail log. I actually did GPS miles around 22. I'll have to look at the GPS data when I get home because the battery also went dead in my watch and on my GPS and in the camera and in my phone. How's that for sweet? Um, so day four. Day four I did a lot of trail miles. I started at uh, Chariot Lodge and ended at Davies Road. Um, I did 22 miles on two liters of water. <laughs> um, not by choice. The reason being that every water source between Chariot Lodge and Davies Road, including the next one after that, um, bone dry. Uh, actually, the one after Davies was had water, but it looked really nasty. So um, I ended up getting water. So here's what happened. At about I don't know 6 p.m., I realized that I'd probably have to night hike. So I took my pack off, got my headlamp out, got it ready for when it got dark. My goal was to make it to the next water source, which was the one past Davies Road. So I kicked in high gear and just kind of went through the pain and hiked. Made it to Davies Road just as it's, you know, really time to get the headlamp out. So I get the headlamp out, put it on, hike down to where the creek's at, take a look at it not interested in the water that was there. It was kind of brackish smelling. Had a lot of leaves in it. Um, originally I was going to camp on the bridge. I took my uh, chair out, sat on the chair on the bridge, put my frog dog's poncho over top of me to you know, shed off any moisture uh, dew from the night and also to keep in some body heat. And uh, for whatever reason, I decided 15, 20 minutes later to go back to Davies Road. I nearly called it quits. I ain't going to joke. Um, the struggling to find water the whole trip has been horrible. Um, so for 12 miles, day four, I was without water because I ran out. 10 miles in, 2 liters of water, 10 miles about, and uh, then spent 12 miles trying to find water. I never did find water. So I go back to Davies Road from the bridge, and I'm like, fuck it. I'm sure the game wardens and game service don't permit you to camp there. But I'm going to camp there anyway. So at the intersection of Shatali Trace and Davies Road, there were two trees just far enough apart for me to put my hammock. I pitched it at like 9.30 at night. No sooner than I laid down, I heard a vehicle coming. And it turned off before it got to me. So, But... Uh, so I didn't have water for food. I didn't have water to drink. I was dehydrated. Like my like when I peed, it burned. Like that dehydrated. My lips were dry. They're, they're actually still dry today. My lips were dry. Um, my muscles were extremely sore from dehydration. I nearly was going to call it quit. I had cell phone service. I could have easily just texted my support crew, my sister, and said, come and get me. But part of the thing about long distance hiking is mental toughness. Really, part of the thing about life in general is mental toughness. You can't just give up. 
at every opportunity that you don't feel like moving forward. You have to keep going. 